Hello everyone! Our mission on the Broken Isles is to get our hands on the Pillars of Creation to seal the rift at the tomb of Sargeras. The Titan of Golgonev can be found within Azuna, an ancient elven island where the highborn elves of Sudamar perfected their mightiest of magics. These days it's a cursed ruin and Archmage Ketgar is planning an expedition into that area, so we're told to seek him out immediately. I prefer using the Great Staff Atiesh's raven form. Nothing's worse than saddle sores. The demon hunters have set up camp on the far side of the island. Perhaps they can help us locate the Pillar of Creation. Look there, Naga forces. We have competition from Queen Ajara herself. She must also be after the Pillar of Creation. This is unexpected. Breathtaking. Imagine all the arcane knowledge lost to the ages here. There, the Illidari. And the Burning Legion is here too. We're here for the Tidestone, but at the Illidari stand we find some of the demon hunters trying to hold the area and prevent the demons from taking Azuna and the rest of the Broken Isles. We're asked by Jace Darkweaver to reignite his wards to keep the Legion at bay, as well as collect some souls for Alari the Soul Eater. She's looking for information regarding Lord Illidan, and it will be easier to break the demons by giving them a taste of the Scythe of Souls. At this point, the last to be seen of Illidan's body was during the Legion attack upon the Vault of the Wardens. Gul'dan and Cordana took Illidan away, with Mayev quickly going after them, while the demon hunters, they were told to meet up with Ketgar. Alari tries to interrogate the demons that we found, but she finds out that Questioner Aravnal, a demon she's kept trapped ever since her time on Mardum, he's helping them to resist. We take him out, but we still learn nothing about Illidan. Instead we're told that the Illidari is unraveling, betrayed from within, a curse will bear for all eternity. Alari tells us to not take what he said to heart, and that the Inquisitor demons are masters of misinformation. But as we're Send to meet up with Korvas, we soon find out that Aravnal was speaking the truth. A couple of the demon hunters, they've been taken captive, and while most were able to resist the torments and temptations from the Legion, one of them gave in. Cyana Nightglaive turned traitor. She joined the Legion. Cyana has decided to join Cordana and the Legion. Suffer no traitors as we plan to bring her down. We also turn our attention to an unexpected ally. During the fighting, Corvus saw a blue dragon swoop in and attack the demons. She couldn't believe her eyes considering that she fought the blue dragon flight to be extinct. But that's not the case as we find Stelagosa, we get the key and we set her free. My thanks. Now I am going to finish off the warden who did this to me. Stelagosa, no! Come back! Damn! Stelagosa is eager to make Cordana pay, so we quickly join her at the Overlook to finish this business together. Come do your best. Nightglaive has been undergoing some changes. We are ready for you. Feel the fell energy course through. Ah, we've been expecting you. How is Cadgar? Felsworn Nightglaive, prove yourself. I have other matters to attend to. Yes, my mistress. I am more powerful than all of you! If you only knew- but I was promised! You are nothing but a coward. Let's get out of here before we're overrun. No one can be allowed to become a fell-sworn traitor working for the Legion. We've dealt them a telling blow, but even now the Legion is summoning in more powerful demons. We cannot allow them to regain their momentum, or the Broken Isles are lost. You must come to the Azure Wing Repose and meet with my grandfather Senegos. For now, the Illidari can hold the line against the Legion, and we don't get any extra information about Illidan's location. That's okay though, as we must concentrate on obtaining the Pillar of Creation, and if anyone knows where the Pillar can be found, it would be Senegos. This does not look good. He is not well. What is happening here? Let the youthful one approach. I am not 
not as dead as I look. Farewell, my friend, until we meet again. I know why you are here, small one. Please, <coughs> help. Senegos is possibly the oldest dragon alive, and we cannot simply let him slip away. We're told to slay some of the layworms and collect the crackling cores to drop it in the pool and buy Senegos a few more breaths. Senegos. We seek one of the pillars of creation. I know it is here on Azuna. You speak of the Tide Stone of Galdeneth. It was shattered long ago. The Tide Stone? Shattered? How? I do not know. But I know where the pieces lie. Rest now, Grandfather. You must save your energy. Don't be so eager to mourn, Starlight. Give me this one last adventure. As we talk with Senegos, a report comes in that the Nightfallen are attacking their well plans, but we're not here for them, we're here for the Pillar. And Senegos informs us that the Ghost Elves to the south, they once had a Tidestone, but it was destroyed eons ago. The city's ruler, Prince Ferrandis, fell with the city, so if anyone knows where the fragments are, it would be the Ghost of the Prince. Senegos and the Blue Dragonflight, that's a story for another day. As we ride out, we meet up with Nightwatcher Idri, one of the ghostly elves that they were talking about, and she is willing to take us to Ferrandis if we help them out with taking out the Naga and their Phantom Commander Zarin. We already saw these Naga move in on the land and they too are hunting for the Tidestone, but I haven't been able to figure out what exactly it is that they want the Tidestone for. It's possible that they simply wanted to prevent us from obtaining it, which would mean that Ajara and the Naga are still working together with the Legion, and I'll go deeper into this later on in the video, but what you need to know about Ajara and the Naga is that the whole reason why they exist in the first place is because of their Legion with the Legion going wrong. Back during War of the Ancients, Ajara Ajara and a Highborn, they made contact with Sargeras and the Legion, and they tried to summon him into the world. Their plans failed, the land split apart, and Ajara was in her palace, refusing to admit defeat as water started to rush in. From the depths, whispers came to her. There is a way, you will become more than you ever were, we can help. And when the time comes for what we grant you, you will serve us well. With a nod, Ajara agreed to the whispers, and Nazav the Old God transformed her and those that followed her into the Naga as we see them today. Like I said, I'm not 100% certain what the reasoning is, but either way, they're standing in our way, so we take them out and we ask Idri to lead the way. I will escort you to Prince Barondas if that is what you truly wish. If you get the chance, spit on him for me. Most of these spirits are not really fans of Ferrandis, but we'll find out why in just a moment. First, the prince asks of us to deal with the murlocs desecrating their bones by taking them out and bringing some of the bones back. On top of that, we're also helping out Magister Garuhat, who's working on a nice little cocktail mix. For this, he'll need six arcane infused eggs, and to boost the presentation, instead of using a regular old olive on a toothpick, he wants us to collect all six eyes from Gangamesh. Then there's Lady Irisa, who's getting a little bit worried about Elder Aldrif. He went on a walk around 10,000 years ago, and he has not returned yet. It's been a while now, so we're asked to check out what happened to him, and we find his spirit stuck in the water. After releasing him, he explains that he doesn't exactly know what happened. He heard a loud crashing noise, and then he found himself stuck beneath this beam. Since then, he's just been simply waiting, you know, just waiting for around 10,000 years, and we finally set him free. When we finished up all the quests and we return with Garuhat's ingredients, he decides that the best person to try it out first is of course himself. He actually found a way to set himself free from their curse, which keep them around as a spirit. Prince Ferrandis, he is happy with our aid and he can use a champion like us, so he leads us to the ruins of Narvalas, where the academy is and also the pieces of the Tidestone. Thaldris, my trusted captain. Hold right there. We will not let you into Narvalas again. Not after what happened last time. I beg your forgiveness, Thaldris. You sundered the land we called home. You denied us the release of death. Ten thousand years of damnation for ten thousand elves. All because of your foolish alliances and botched politics. What can I do to make amends? I doubt there is anything you can do now, Prince. 
So what exactly did the prince do to his people? That's described in ancient highborn tomes that tell the following tale. Queen Ajara's pact with the demon lord Sargeras went mostly uncontested by her subjects. One of the few that dared to defy her was Prince Ferrandis. As one of the queen's trusted advisors, Ferrandis was in regular contact with the highborn of Zinajari, but his palace in Azuna, it was several leagues away from the elven capital. As such, he was able to witness Sargeras' influence on the highborn court without falling sway to the demon's temptation. Ferrandis' plan was bold but simple, destroy the well of eternity in Zinajari. Doing so would close the portal to Sargeras' realm and stem the tide of evil before it even started. In order to accomplish this task, he would use the power of an artifact stored deep within Narfala's academy, the Tidestone of Gorgoneth. Unfortunately, the queen's influence in Ferrandus' palace was already deep-seated. Vandros, a young noble in Ferrandus' court, he got word of Ferrandus' plans to defy the queen and reported the insurrection to Queen Ajara herself. Ajara wasted no time in punishing Ferrandis and his people. In her frightening display of arcane power, she destroyed the Tidestone of Gorgonev and in doing so, released a wave of dark energy over all of Azuna and its inhabitants. Since that day, the elves of Azuna have been unable to experience the release of death. Their spirits, our spirits, wander the land indefinitely, all because of our prince's unwise allegiances. So Ferrandis actually tried to do what Malfurion and Illidan succeeded in doing, sealing off the well of eternity, or in this case, destroying it. Vandros, the one that betrayed the prince, he's done pretty well for himself, as he became one of Elisander's closest advisors, and he shows up as a boss in the Arkway. His prince had to live with the failure of protecting his people for over 10,000 years, but perhaps now, there is a chance to do better with us as his champions. We're asked to find and defeat the creature that leads this naga attack against his people. We're asked to take the battle to Aphissa. Your orders are clear! Find the Tide Stone and return it to her glory, Queen Ajara! These creatures only pretend to understand its power. The Tide Stone belongs to Ajara, her radiance, the light beneath the tides! Scour the sands! Pillage the ruins! Slay anyone and anything that gets in your path! Find that Tide Stone! Your Queen Ajara wills it, and so shall it be done! Enough of this! The Tide Stone will be ours! It seems like she isn't quite ready to have her final confrontation yet, but at least the Naga attack is somewhat under control. While we deal with this, we also help out Calistia and Olofil's Starlands from the Kirintor. They thought that their parents had died thousands of years ago, but seeing all these spirits in Azuna, perhaps their parents are still out there, and after scrying the area, they locate them and we reunite the children with their parents. Time to check in with Ferrandis and see how the prince is doing. Failure. Murderer. Fool. Butcher. Stop. Stop the voices, I beg you. Not too well, it seems, and the prince is eager to leave this accursed town behind. A walk of shame lies in front of him, with spirits assaulting and accusing him, but Ferrandis carries on and he shows us the way to Narfala's academy. This was once the center of magical studies in all of Azeroth, and the Tidestone should be locked up within. Don't blind good luck on your quest for the Tidestone, hero. I dare not enter that academy. But I swear I will aid you in whatever way I can. The Academy is pretty much Hogwarts in a nutshell, and the spirits don't seem to realize what's going on. They don't seem to realize that they're dead. We're told to first get ourselves together and get our equipment in order by picking up a wand, a hat, a spellbook, and steal some robes from a sleeping spirit that's begging the headmistress not to use the paddle. With our equipment sorted, we're allowed in, but the only one that gets to see the Tidestone is the headmistress herself. She's the only one with a key, and she hasn't opened the door in about 10,000 years. We can't even talk to the headmistress right now, since class is about to start, so we actually do some studying, which involves wanding all over the place, we discover the courtship rituals of the scrum, and we draw some runes on the floor. Instructor Nidriel has a sneaky feeling that we're trying to avoid her studies, but she can also tell that we're anxious to see the headmistress, so we're finally allowed in to talk to her. We tell her that we need to be brought to the Tidestone of Gorgonev, but she explains that the Tidestone Chamber, it's under quarantine and has been so since the very day of Prince Ferrandis' betrayal. Infringement upon said quarantine carries punishment as severe as death 
or even detention. She needs to sort out her priorities. She has warned the students countless times and she'll make an example out of us as she goes on the attack. She enforces extra homework, she applies strict discipline and she has some very harsh lessons. There's no panel involved though, which I was personally looking forward to, but it is what it is. And upon our defeat, we obtain the key and we gain entry into the vault. There, amongst the spirits, we collect the five tie stone shards, but we're not the only ones who found a way into the academy. How perfectly convenient! The brainless oaf led us right to the Tide Stone! Our queen beneath the tides can reassemble the pieces! As for you, you will make an acceptable slave. We're taken captive into the hate coil slave pen, but luckily for Randis, he could not leave us hanging as he explains what happened. Guilt overcame me. I could not simply wait while you fought my battles. I resolved to follow you into the academy. I'd only reached the academy entrance when I saw those two Naga with you in tow. Make sure that prisoner doesn't awaken, Parjesh. Yes, my mistress. I followed them as closely as I dared. I saw my chance. I would attack the Naga leaders and save you from captivity. Be gone, spirit! You the deal with our belongs to us I now! Take the prisoner to the Curse you and your kind, elf! The Queen herself will hear of this! Athissa and the Tidestone had evaded me. Rather than pursuing her, I set off to rescue you, my champion. I had finally found their slave pen. At the entrance to the cave, however, I ran into an old acquaintance. Ferrandis, my most loyal subject. It's been too long. That voice... I'm sorry, you must not recognize me. Is this better? Queen Ashara! You... You lead the Naga? Poor deluded Verandis. Don't you remember? I quashed your rebellion 10,000 years ago. Do you remember how powerless you were to stop me? And look at you now, a specter of your former self, cursed to an eternity of undeath and ineptitude. I'm giving you an opportunity to kneel before me, princeling. Maybe something can be done about that little curse. To release my people's curse, to redeem myself, and secure my legacy. The people of Azuna were, and always will be, too proud to kneel before your demonic allies, witch. And we will never... Kneel! BEFORE YOU! My wrath is coming. I believe you know the rest of the story. Ferrandis was given the opportunity to redeem himself, to lift the burden of 10,000 years, and all he had to do was kneel. Kneel and surrender to Azara's madness. He declines her offer, greatly pissing off the queen, but that's a worry for later. The Naga, they have the Tystone shards, and they'll soon be dragging them into the watery holes, away from our reach. It would be wise to take out the leaders before that happens. Parjesh, rally the rest of our forces! I shall make short work of this minor interruption! It will be done, Tide Mistress. Hey, Coil! Seize them! Draw back, please! Look alive, Night Watchers! Our prince needs us! A shadow's wrath will drown you! For Nazdata! Why, Thaldris? 
Why did you and your men come to my aid? I thought you despised me. We saw what you did. Any elf with the courage to stand up against the Queen herself is worth following. The Night Watchers are yours to command once more, my Prince. I'm glad to have your loyalty again. It's been a long time, Thaldris. The Night Watchers are with their Prince once again, and we need to go into the Eye of Azora, where they're summoning up a monstrosity known as a Roth to exact revenge for our defiance and drown the Broken Isles. We must defeat it before the Queen lets it loose to destroy us all, and in the process obtain the Tidestone. The zone does leave a few questions open for interpretation. Some of you ask me why these Night Elf spirits have a change of heart when they see Ferrandis stand up to the Queen, and I don't have a clear answer. The reason why they were pissed to begin with is the same reason as to why they forgive him. Ferrandis realizes that the queen is no good and he stands up to her, so why is it now different? You could say that they didn't know Ferrandis was working against the queen, but that kind of goes against the information that we find throughout the questing. There are tomes describing the events in detail, there was a rebellion being squashed by Azara, and the spirits tell him that they were cursed for 10,000 years because of his bad politics, so it seems like they were well aware of what was going on. The only thing different that I could find that might give a reason is that back during the War of the Ancients, the Night Elves loved Queen Azara, so much so that even those in the Night of Resistance that were fighting against the Legion, they refused to believe that the Queen was behind this. Instead, they placed the blame on those evil highborn sorcerers in the palace, always thinking that they're better than the rest of them, so perhaps these Night Elf spirits in Azuna, they could not believe that Azara was actually part of it. They just saw it as Ferrandis trying to work against her, and now they've seen her in her Naga form. Now they realize that even the Queen was not to be trusted. Then there is the question as to why the Naga are going for the Tidestone to begin with. I already mentioned this earlier, and I asked around on Twitter, and most of you came back with two reasons. One was to create the Wrath of Azara, and two was possibly opening the Prison of Nazoth. Naturally, the Tidestone is a very powerful artifact, which would draw attention of many, but I couldn't find a quest or dialogue outright stating what they were going to do with it. On top of that, why would the Naga attack now? Azuna has been out there for millennia, and Azara knew that this is where the Tidestone could be found, since she was the one who destroyed it, so what has changed? You could say that she was making use of the Legion attack, but the spirits of Azuna require our aid to fight back against the Naga. So it seems like they were powerful enough to do it on their own. Then there's the bit where the Tidestone is under quarantine within the academy and we open up the way, but it doesn't seem to stop them to begin with. They didn't know that we would open the way for them and we can see the Naga attack right at the start as we fly into the zone, so I wonder what exactly is going on here. I really like the speculation of Nuzov pulling their strings, letting them know that now is the time to strike, but then again, if we go by the whispers from the Nightmare Raid with the five keys opening up the way, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably looking way too deep into this, but let me know if you have a solid answer to the question as to why they went for the Tidestone and why did they do it now. Regardless of that, our mission is clear in front of us. We must travel into the Eye of Azora, take down Azora's minions and stop a raw from rothing all over the land. We bring down Warlord Parges, who's been hanging out with Avisa and must finally pay for imprisoning us. You can't stop the storm. Lady Hatecoil, a Naga sea witch that hails from a long line of Hatecoil nobility, favored by Queen Azar herself. The waves and skies heed her call as she harnesses their power to crush any who would oppose the Hatecoil. Can you feel the winds? They come for you. Serpentrix, an ancient scale beast that makes it home in the northern shallows of Eye of Azara. Even the Naga camp there, they have learned to avoid the area. But you know, we have to get through. Then there's King Deepbeard, a behemoth that strides the ocean floor, surging from the deeps to tear vessels apart with his bare hands. And we kind of killed his son during a side quest in Azuna, so he's not too happy with us. The earth trembles, I the storm awakens, but my queen will not. And then finally, the Wrath of Azara herself, not fully summoned yet, but still powerful enough to put up a fight. One of Azara's most loyal handmaidens, named Lysandre, offered herself willingly to her queen to serve as the instrument of her vengeance. Summoned by hate coil channelers as a last resort after Parshe's failure, the terrifying Wrath of Azara exists to wash away all landwalkers who would stand against her. The water eternal!
and with the Wrath defeated, the Titan of Gorgonef stands before us. The Naga were even kind enough to put the pieces back together. It has been ages since I have seen the Tidestone whole, but there it stands. I and my people owe you a debt of gratitude that we can never repay. Please, return to Azuna as soon as you can. There is much yet left to do. The war against the Legion continues, and there is much left to do within Azuna as well as talk about, since I didn't cover the side quest yet, but that will be for another time. For now, this is the end of the story in Azuna, for getting our hands on a pillar of creation, and one step closer to sealing the gateway at the tomb of Sargeras. Only one more pillar to obtain, but that one won't be available until the Surma raid opens up. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys. See ya!